My name is Robert Moriuki, and uh, our unit today is BJL 227, Sports Journalism. We're going to begin with uh, introduction. We can look at sports and say sport is all competitive physical activity or games that uh, through casual organization, casual organization or organized participation aims to use, maintain, and um, improve physical ability and skills. It also provides enjoyment to participants and also entertains the spectators. Sport is generally recognized as a system of activities which are based in physical athleticism and uh, dexterity. Other sports like chess, bridge, drought are also recognized as mind sports, although they don't have any physical activity. And the sport is also governed by a set of rules or customs to ensure fair competition and allow consistent adjudication of the winner. And sport can also be determined by judges who score elements of the sporting performance, including objective or subjective measures such as technical performance or artistic impression. Records of performance are also kept. And for popular sports, this information may be announced widely or reported in sport news. Sport is also a major source of entertainment for non-participants. Spectator sport draws, also draws large crowds to sports venues and reach very wide audiences through broadcast or print media. Sports can be defined as physical contest which are pursued for the goals and challenges that they give. Uh, according to Carl Diem, he defined uh, a play as purposeless activity for its own sake, the opposite of work. And uh, the most acceptable definitions are those that clearly relate sports to play games and contests. According to the Global Association of International Sports Federation, the umbrella organization for all international sports federations, they say that to determine what a sport is, the following criteria should be followed. One, a sport should have an element of competition. It should also be in no way harmful to anybody, to any living creature. And uh, it should not also rely on equipment provided by a single supplier. Although pro pro proprietary games such as air arena football can allow that single supplier. And also sports should not rely on the lack element and uh, specifically designed into the sport. It should also be physical, it can be physical such as rugby, athletics, uh, football, cycling and so on. And can also be primarily mind such as chess, droughts, uh, sudoku and so on. I can also be motorized like safari rally, like Formula One, like power boating and so on. And it should be primarily be about coordination, such as billiard sports. It can also be animal sported, supported, like equestrian sport or the sports that involve horses like polo, horse riding, and so on. Sports journalism is what we want to define next. And this can be defined as a form of writing 
that reports on matters pertaining to sporting topics and uh, competitions. And uh, sports journalism focuses on reporting amateur and also professional sporting news and events. It doesn't discriminate whether it's amateur uh, sporting events, whether it's professional, all these sports uh, reports. And we can also say that sports journalism is a form of writing that reports on matters pertaining to sporting topics and uh, competitions. We can look at history of uh, sports journalism. And uh, sports journalism began in the early 1800s. And this uh, was targeting the social elite. And we must understand this that uh, media outlets were very few and far between because technology had not uh, reached where we are today where there's a lot of uh, media presence. So the social elite who would uh, be able to afford um, sports and the sports reportage were the ones that were targeted by sports journalism early in the, 19, in the 1800s. And the modern sports journalism has its roots, its content, when it started appearing in newspapers in the early 1800s. Uh, newspapers had been um, begun after the invention of the printing press by Johannes Gutenberg around the 1500 uh, uh, century, 15th century, but it's only after the 1800s, around the 1800s, that newspapers appeared and they started give, uh, uh, looking at co sporting content for its, uh, uh, as its content. And uh, at the beginning, the sports reporting was not frequent, and uh, it was only covered, it only covered uh, horse racing and uh, boxing. And in these sports, uh, due to very many factors like, uh, 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 you know, little population, not very many people were there, and therefore not very many activity, uh, sporting activities were being done. Even the reporting was not frequent. The focus of the coverage was not so much on the event itself, but it uh, looked at the greater social content. During the 1800s and the 1820s and 1830s, uh, the primary target for newspapers was the social elite, as newspapers were still too expensive for the common person. Horse races and boxing bouts only attracted much interest from the social elite. However, as the 20th century approached, several important changes occurred that uh, led to the increased activity in sports journalism. One, it was the advent of the penny press, and this allowed for cheaper and more tabloid style of newspaper production. This paper, this penny press, newspapers were quite cheap, you know, costing just a penny, and they were mass produced in the United States from the 1830s onwards. And this mass production of inex inexpensive newspapers became possible following the shift from hard crafted to steam powered printing during the so called industrial revolution. Newspapers began using advertising to pay for their production costs instead of relying solely on circulation. And that's why the beginners of the penny press were able to get a return on their investment because what they had uh, mass produced, although it would be, uh, it was a very cheap uh, newspaper, they were able to get a lot of money from that mass production. 
And uh, the cost of producing newspapers were covered by advertisers, which reduced the cost of the, cost of the paper, which allowed many people to be able to afford, to afford newspapers. And this was quite uh, an advantage to advertisers because very many people would be able to view, would be able to see their products and services. And this increased the number of people who would be exposed to the advertisement featured in the papers, which was uh, quite an advantage to both the press and uh, the advertisers. Simultaneously, the Industrial Revolution was creating an expanding middle class because many people were working in the industries and they had uh, money to spare. These people had moved from the countryside to the booming urban developments and had uh, purchasing power. And they also had time for leisure because after working in the factories, they would have time, they would need time to relax and uh, read the newspapers and look for uh, information from back home. And newspapers, newspaper publishers started looking for content that appealed to the masses. And so they turned to sports. And these developments also coincided with the rising popularity of baseball, which was rapidly becoming America's uh, uh, prime past time. A newspaper in, in 1883, the New, New York World, was the first newspaper to have a full-time sports department. And uh, the following period from 1880 to 1990 saw a massive increase in sports coverage in uh, publications. And during this time, newspapers focused mainly on play-by-play -play coverage and game recaps of the sport events. And local publications started hiring beat reporters who were tasked with following all developments pertaining to sports and the sporting teams. And uh, we must remember that during this time, the other media platforms like radio, like uh, television, had not been properly developed. So many people depended on newspapers for news, for leisure, for entertainment, and so on. And um, uh, journalists would also travel with the team to interview players, and um, dedicated uh, sections called press boxes in stadiums were also uh, started so that the press can, could sit there and record the notes of the games. And as technology introduced new developments, the focus of sports coverage shifted from sports, from play-by-play, -play, to statistical analysis of the game and background pieces of the players. Various, we can look at sports in Kenya, and uh, we know from research that there were very many indigenous traditional sports that had prevailed in Kenya as elements of culture and a way of life since the history of mankind. Yeah, that Africans, Kenyans were players, they would play, they had their own indigenous games that they would play. And this uh, Traditional games and st uh, sports were prevalent since antiquity and they included wrestling, racing exercises, stick fights, hunting, board games, bull fights, dances, among many others. Sports, modern sports in Kenya, can be attributed to the British colonization, uh, that when the British came here, they introduced their uh, type of games, and there was a smooth transition from indigenous culture to modern Western sporting 
events because and taste because Africans, Kenyans were already uh, playing, they enjoyed games, they were energetic, and uh, they would uh, indulge in sports. So when these modern sports were introduced into the country, they embraced them. S uh, new sports such as football, tennis, horse racing, golf, polo, were introduced by the Europeans. Professional teams in form of uh, clubs were formed by colonial British settlers and Asian contractors as early as 1922. And this was before the establishment of formal schools. And in 1925, uh, sports were formally introduced in schools. And the syllabus for teaching sport uh, through physical training in schools was introduced in 1935. Uh, football and uh, athletics were also the first uh, sports to be professionally organized. The game of football especially was embraced with passion by Kenyans from all socioeconomic uh, groupings. And uh, this was because football was simple in nature and was very, very easy to play. Athletics uh, was another modern sport to be formally organized in Kenya around 1922. And Kenya has regularly produced Olympic and Commonwealth champions in various distance events, 800 meters, 1500 meters, 3000 sepoches, 5000 meters, 10,000 and the marathons. And winning medals at the Olympic Games has become a source of our national pride. And uh, the father of all good making in Kenya was bronze medalist Kiprugut Wilson. And uh, other gold medalists like Naftali Temu, Kipchoge Keino, Amos Biwot, uh, Benjamin Kogo, Daniel Rudisha, Onyoro Nyamau, all participated in 1968 Tokyo in Japan in different fields and brought a vari a vari various um, medals. And other several medalists like Catherine Deleva, Moses Tanui, Samuel Wanjiru, Patrick Musioki, Tekla Lorupe, Ibrahim Hussein, Julius Yego, among many others, have uh, graced the medal at tables across the international stage. And uh, journalism, sport journalism initially was just seen as a joke. That just was just easy living, sloppy journalism. And it was uh, derogatorily referred to by many newspaper departments in the world as the toy department, you know, just something concerning soft news. But over time, this has changed and uh, now sports journalism is taken very seriously across the media uh, and this follows the explosion of the volume and range of uh, sports activities. In Kenya, sports journalism began with the introduction of mass media after colonization and the first media to be introduced was the print media and uh, with the starting of the East African Standard in Mombasa in 1904. And this time, the nation of Kenya was still in its, its nascent stage. There, was, there were no formal schools or any other institutions. Uh, communication was non-existent. There was no infrastructure. And then, therefore, print penetration into the interior was very difficult. Our organized sports were still unknown and um, the modern sports were only being slowly introduced. So therefore, even the reporting, the reporting was very minimal because um, literacy was not there. People were not uh, literate in the Western uh, word of the uh, meaning of the, of the word and uh, therefore it's only the elite, it's only the colonialists that 
that were able to uh, take advantage of the newspaper and the newspaper mainly reported on their uh, areas, their activities, sporting activities and their news. However, in 1925, the Gossage Cup was launched. There is a soap manufacturing company known as Gossage, began the Gossage Cup. And this was widely reported in the East African standard. The first competition for the Gossage Cup took place in 1926 between Kenya and Uganda. And this was reported by the East Africa standard newspaper. In the reporting this time, only Europeans had names. The Africans, the pioneer African footballers, were not recognized and were featured just as nameless people. In uh, the issue of July 20, 1938, for example, the East African Standard reported uh, this way, that a native uh, team from Eldred paid a visit to Nakuru, to Nakuru last weekend on Friday they were beaten by an Akuru side by four goals to two, while on Saturday they played and drew with the holders of the Buxton Cup. The score was three all. So you can see that in this initial reports from newspapers, there were no mentions of goal scores, there were no names of outstanding uh, players, no names of best players, no names of goalkeepers, no names of defenders. And uh, the players were only referred to as native players. There was native football season, native football events, and uh, the names of the players uh, was not featured. And uh, the names of the football teams were all European in orientation. We had Faisal, there was Burnley, Chelsea, Blue Band, Dundee, Leeds United, and so on. But after the Second World War, these things began to change, and uh, Africans started to have names. And um, reports of the Gossage Cup and other clubs began to contain the names of African players. And a shortened version of uh, the East African Standard of March 19, 1945, reports thus that Central Cavirondo team defeated, defeated North Cavirondo and owed their victory largely to outstanding play of their center half, or combo, and to the excellent shooting of Galib, their center forward. This was quite refreshing because the Kenyan football fans could now begin to know their heroes, their football heroes. And the pioneers were really never known, will really never be known. Yeah, the, those pioneers, the ones that were playing in those early years, we'll never know them. And they went down into in anonymity thanks to the blackout of the media of those days. However, with the new development, now we know people like Elijah Ridonde, yes, Shem Chimoto, Nasir Omar, Peter Wasiembo, Amiran Shiba, Peter Oronge, Joe Kandenge, Ali Sungura, and others. Uh, later, photographs began to appear on uh, newspapers, and these photographs were mainly black and white. But after technological advancement, then uh, this changed and uh, there was introduction of colored photos. And other media, print, print media that featured sports were the Daily Nation, which uh, was introduced later after the East African Standard, Africa Sports Magazine, and the Drum Magazine. In 1958, the Daily Nation newspaper was introduced, and this was just a few years before independence. So it brought an end to the monopoly that had been enjoyed by the East African Standard, 
and this quite brought quite a, vibra a, a lot of vibrancy in the uh, sector. At Independence, there were several tournaments that were lined up in celebration and widely reported by the media of that day, East Africa Standard and the Daily Nation. They also had the sister publications in Kiswahili and um, these were Baraza for the East African Standard and uh, Taifa Leo, uh, the sister paper of Daily Nation. And uh, two European Cyprian Fenadis and Poly Fenadis were quite uh, respected Daily Nation sports writers during this time. However, Africans started to emerge with the, the likes of Hezekiah, late Hezekiah Wepukuli, Wepukulu, uh, who was a pioneer African sports journalism, who did duty for both the East African Standard and uh, the Daily Nation. There were also other re renowned sports journalists over time, like Roy Gachohe, we have Larry Ngara, Elias Makori, Richard Mwangi, among many others. In the 1920s, radio was introduced in Kenya, and this time Kenya was still a British colony. The broadcast targeted the white settlers where they monitored the news from uh, their home country and other parts of the world. And the first radio broadcast targeting Africans came during the Second World War to inform parents and relatives of African soldiers who were, what was happening at the war front. Because this time, African soldiers had been conscripted into the British Army to fight for them in all parts of the world. So reports the reports of uh, the war, reports of uh, those people back home were relayed by the radio broadcasts. The first broadcast service was created for Africans in 1953 as African Broadcasting Service, which carried programs in Kiswahili, in Tholuo, in Kikuyu, in Kinandi, in Kiluhia, Kikamba, and Arabic. And uh, English service broadcasters who pioneered the service were Peter Clare, there was David Kelly, Hazen Maso Mazoa, Sami Louis, Norbert Okare, Martin Billy Muta, among others. And the Kiswahili service broadcasters, broadcast pioneers were Simon Desanjo, Dalali Mze, Aziz Yakub, Stephen Kikumu, Sami Louis, among others. They emerged sports broadcasters, the likes of Ali Salim Manga, Jack Sylvester Ayo, Mohamed Juman Jogona, Lennon Mwamba Botela, and this ruled the airwaves with their live football coverage that kept the public riveted to their chairs during the lively football tournaments. In the 1990s, the airways were liberalized and saw the introduction of very many independent radio stations. And in the 2000s, there was the introduction of the digital technology, which enabled the FM stations. And there are quite a number of FM stations that were started, and this was a blessing for sports journalism. The stations were also in local ethnic languages, are also in local ethnic languages, and now sports can be broadcast in several uh, languages across the country. In 1962, saw the introduction of a television in Kenya. This was a black and white medium. This one broadcast for only a few hours, beginning from 6 o'clock to around 10 o'clock in the evening. And the ownership of this new media was also very limited to a few elites in the urban areas. 
and therefore in its impact in these initial stages uh, of sports coverage was hardly ever felt. However, in 1978, this television, Kenyan television, transitioned to color. And in 1980, a new television station was opened in Mombasa to relay programs and uh, produce local dramas, music, uh, cultural, and other products. And pioneer broadcasts, broadcasters were Maurice Mwenda, Aish Jenebe, Aziz Yakub, amongst others. And uh, during this time, the advantages of television had started to be apparent, and the ownership, even the ownership of the TV, had improved tremendously. Many Kenyans had uh, been able to buy television sets. And this was a major, TV has a major advantage of sight, sound, movement, realism, and so on. And the action, the viewers can be able to watch action as it happens. So it makes television viewing quite exciting. So the popularity of sports on TV soared, and today all major games are a must watch for television. So we have seen uh, the uh, history and uh, how sports have been covered across the media platforms since uh, the introduction of colonialism in our country and even in the world. Now we want to look for opportunity at opportunities for sports journalism. A, a sports journalism has so many opportunities available for him or her. One, one can be a sports writer for various print media, newspapers, uh, magazines and so on and uh, the many newspapers that we have need uh, sporting content on a daily basis so a sports journalist can um, write for these uh, newspapers because sports magazines also are available and they need a constant supply of sporting content so there is a lot of uh, opportunity of writing sports in the print media, newspapers, magazines, and so on. A sports journalist can also write for the electronic media, for radio, for television. There are ready markets for sports content every day. There is a proliferation of uh, uh, radio, FM stations, there are so many televisions, television uh, stations, and all these need uh, content. They have what we can say insatiable appetite for sports news that happen across the country and uh, across the world. These several FM radio stations and the TV stations in the country need uh, content. They need content, sporting content. Uh, because one, they uh, broadcast 24 hours every day. Other opportunities available are photography, in photography. Photographs bring alive, they bring sports activities to life. One can be a still photographer for newspapers, for magazines, and for other print media. And one can also be a video photographer for TV. Another opportunity is that a sports journalist can also be a sports commentator for radio or for television. There are so many games where one can employ their t trade in radio and TV commentating. And games come alive and I enjoyed more with good commentating. There are also opportunities for sports journalists in the media, in the media departments. One can work as an editor, 
can work as a sub-editor for the various sports departments of the various media houses. One can also uh, work as, um, yes, as editor or a sub-editor. And um, these sub-editors assist sports editors and uh, they are very useful in the media. A journalist can also work as a sports blogger. One can start a blog on sporting matters and can gain a following and earn a living that way. And this is because there are so many interests in sports and very many sports activities that can keep a blog uh, alive. There are also opportunities in sports associations and uh, organizations. The skills and competencies that uh, sports journalists have can be very valued in organizations, in sports organizations, in sports associations, because there's a lot of writing and reporting, and a journalist can engage in these activities here. The other opportunity for sports journalism, they can be employed in a marketing department of a sports business because their knowledge on sports can come in very handy in the marketing of sports merchandise. And similarly, in advertising of sports goods and services, sports journalists can also be found quite useful. And uh, with that, we come to the end of our presentation. Thank you very much.